Y'all killing me with this But now they start talking about like serious stuff, right? And these two points I thought were very interesting. One of them, th this point is not really so much funny as uh, it was m more interesting because like it was something that I didn't even know Trump did. Apparently, when Trump was in office, see, everybody likes to talk about how bad Trump is, but like sometimes I guess he does like some good stuff. I don't know. I don't, I'm very indifferent towards him. But apparently while he was in office, he had set this like law or or something in place that was supposed to go through to where like hospitals and medical companies were were uh, supposed to publish their prices on what they do in the hospital. So instead of you just going to the hospital like you do today and not knowing how much anything costs and then getting fixed up and getting like a $50,000 bill... Now you can, before going to a hospital, if if this would have went through, you would have been able to go, instead of going to a hospital and then finding out the price, you could have been like, okay, I need uh, stitches. So I can go online and search which hospital is going to be the cheapest place to get stitches. Then you can go to that hospital. And something like that would have been very good. It would have made uh, the transparency of these hospitals you know, it would have made that priority and that would have led to them having to be more competitive with their prices. It would have probably lowered the cost of medical treatment by like 50 percent or something like that. If I'm just guessing, you know what I mean? And uh, to hear them talk about this was was very interesting because apparently uh, Trump was saying that right when the Biden administration got into office, they kind of dismantled that. And I, I don't really see there being any downsides to something like that going through. So I could only the only other reason I could see the Biden administration doing that, if what he's saying is true, I don't I don't pay attention to politics that much. If what he's saying is true, the only reason the Biden administration would have for dismantling a program like that would be just to spite Trump. And that goes that that says a lot about the administration as a whole not giving a fuck about what's good for the people, uh, more or less just wanting to spite a political opponent, which it seems like we've uh, been seeing that a lot from them with the whole like political persecution of Donald Trump. And if you think I'm dick riding for Trump, let's not forget about the fact that they denied RFK Secret Service. This guy had two of his family members killed by the government. They denied him Secret Service. So I mean, it, it's like anyone who's against their administration, they're going to do whatever to try to fuck them. And so let, let's listen to these guys talk about this, because like I said, I found this to be very interesting. Um, recently, we had Bernie Sanders on. Right. And interesting. I, and I know <laughs> that's very interesting. Certainly, um, you guys don't agree on a lot of things, but uh, I think you both acknowledge how horribly rigged the healthcare system is against the American people. Um, because hospitals and insurance companies get away with hiding their prices from all of us. And literally they can charge whatever they want. You know, it's like you sign up and say, yes, I'll pay. You trust the hospital, but then you get home and the bill is it's whatever, you know, which pretty much feels like some form of, of extortion to me. That's what it seems like to it's me. A form. Yeah. Uh, but you had an executive order where you hold up. Did you see that? I kind of thought that was interesting. It's like, right. Right when uh, Theo's like, this kind of feels like extortion to me. You see Trump kind of lean back, looks over at his people, starts licking his lips, licking his chops because he it, now Trump is starting to get into this conversation. He's like, okay, the jokes are over. Now we can start talking about the shit that's going to make me look good in front of the people. And so he he hears that word extortion. He hears that buzzword. He's like, all right. In his head, he's like, I'm now I hear that word. I can really make this conversation work for me. You know, so I, I thought that was very interesting to see him act like that while listening to Thea. Watch this. Is, it's whatever, you know, which pretty much feels like some form of, of extortion to me. That's what it seems like to it's me. For him. Yeah. Uh, but you had an executive order where you created a federal rule 
uh, forcing hospitals and insurers to publish all their prices, Yep. right? So that people would be able to know, okay, if an MRI costs $600 here and it's $5,000 yep. there, then I can go here and save myself money. Right. But that hasn't even been enforced. Like um, hospitals- Biden. Biden got away with it. Hospitals and insurance companies, they're not in, they're still not showing their prices. They hated it. Of course they did. And because it would, would have made it very competitive and Biden let it go. He did. He never enforced it. And to get that approved was a big deal. And that would have brought down the price of, of, you know, oh, so many things, not only, you know, just care, right? Care, physical care, mental care. That would have brought down the, the cost of care by 50, 60%. And Biden and Kamala didn't press it. It was a big thing to get it, but I'll be pressing it. And All right, so right there, like I said, very interesting topic to bring up. Be careful who you vote for, folks. Make sure you know the whole story. Something like that would change a lot of people's lives. A lot of people's lives. It, like, insane. And... It's, like I said, very interesting that the Biden administration kind of saw something like that and said to themselves, ah, well, Trump did that. Ah, fuck it. We'll just let that one go. That That's something that, like, every common person would have benefited from. So, oh, hopefully, if he gets into office, I don't know if he does. I'm not saying I hope he gets into office. If he does, hopefully he goes through with this because I thought that was a big deal. But now it's funny. That that would have been like a good policy that he put through, right? Now he starts talking about this other policy. And they start talking about like uh, lobbies and stuff. And lobbyists are like behind a lot of like laws and different things like that that benefit corporations. Uh, if you don't know, a lot of times different sects of the industries or, or uh, the economy... Like you have like the lawyers, you have the teachers unions, you, you know, stuff like that. They all have like lobbyists that will lobby for like their causes when it comes to things like politics and laws and and different shit like that. And those lobbyists, uh, they have a lot of a lot of sway with these politicians because they're putting a lot of money in their pockets. You know what I mean? Let's let's all be real here. So they start talking about the the lobbyist problem, and Trump says the biggest lobbyist problem that we have, the biggest lobby in the country, is the lawyers' lobby. And I got something that will really put these jamokes into place. And he's like, I got this idea where the loser of a lawsuit pays for the entire lawsuit. Now, what that would do is it would stop people from being so litigious. We're a company, or a company, we're a country that kind of runs like a company, uh, where you know people are so quick to sue other people. You know what I mean? Somebody defamation. It, somebody makes a fucking YouTube video, they're getting sued. It's, you know what I mean? You you accidentally uh, cut your foot open at somebody else's house. That's a lawsuit. It, that's just the way that the country is. It's the way that it, that stuff works in this day and age. And Trump's like, I got a good idea to, you know, cut down on that as well, to make it so that people don't sue each other so easily. Let's make it so that the loser of the lawsuit pays for the entire lawsuit. They pay for the expenses on the other side. They pay for their own expenses. They pay for everything. And on paper, that sounds like a good idea, right? A actually, let... Let's listen to them talk about it, and then I'll kind of, I'll, I'll put my two cents in on it. What are some of the other lobbies that are out there that we don't even know about? Well, the most powerful lobby is uh, the lawyer lobby, I would say. The teacher's lobby is important or powerful, sometimes really to the detriment of everybody. But the most powerful lobby is probably the lawyers. Who would think that, right? But they have... They're, they're, that's why if you wanted to get rid of court cases and cut down litigation costs, which in this country is out of control, loser it's pays. Crazy. What you do is you go loser pays. In other words, the loser of a lawsuit has to pay for the other side, has to pay back all the money the other side spent. You think that would solve it? Yeah, it would get rid of 75, 80% of, of the litigation. We are a very litigious country. It's on. Okay, now. 
Like I said, you know, you just heard it from the horse's mouth. He, he's like, I think this is a great idea. I think everyone would benefit from this. He's wrong. Now, on paper, or to like, you know, a, a, average person maybe not putting too much thought into this, they're like, oh, yeah, that actually does sound kind of cool. You know what I mean? Because everybody really is so quick to sue each other. So it would be nice to live in a world where... Things like that maybe weren't so easy or people had like uh, less of an incentive to do it. Because if the loser pays, there's going to be a lot of people who are going to be less likely to sue on the off chance that they might lose and have to pay for everything. You know, so on paper, that sounds, I guess, cool, right? This is why it's not cool. Because what that's going to do is it's going to make people less likely to sue corporations. And when corporations actually do fucked up shit, they always have a team of the best of the best lawyers to back them. So when you, if you put something like this in place and a company like Coca-Cola, let's say, accidentally poisons half a million people by putting something fucked up in their product, then, you know, people are going to be less likely to try to sue for that. Because what happens if Coke wins? You know what I mean? It, 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 in certain lawsuits, it kind of seems like a dead giveaway. Like, okay, this is an unlosable case, right? But there is always the possibility. Let's look, look at the O.J. Simpson trials. You know what I mean? Every white person in America thought that was a lock. <laughs> Little did they know Rodney King was going to be, or not Rodney King, who... Who, who is his goddamn lawyer? Ka Kardashian and the other guy. If the glove doesn't fit. You must have quit, goddammit. Can't, can't believe I said Rodney King. But, um, yeah, you get what I'm saying. You know, so there's always the possibility that the other side wins, even if it seems like an unlosable case. So I, I thought that was interesting that they brought that up. I thought that was interesting that Trump would want to put something in place like that because everybody wants to sue that fucking guy. You know what I mean? So it's kind of like that. I, I, I took that as him like sneakily trying to pass like an idea under the radar to the people that he's like, see, this would benefit everybody. But in reality, it's, it's going to benefit people like him, corporations like him. And hold my fart like a bong rip.